welcome to Tuesday Newsday, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. We've got a ton of stuff to go over today, but first I have two really short but really important announcements. First off, I heard you guys. Last video I mentioned I may be removing Meme Break, a section where I take a little break from the hard press news and have a little laugh. But I wanted your guys' input first before I just took it out. Well, that video got the most comments I have ever received on a video. And after reading literally 5,000 responses, I got good news. Meme Break isn't going anywhere. It's a part of this channel and it's a part of Tuesday News Day. Meme Break has been saved. And I want to announce that this channel, Thrill Seeker, has received a nomination from the International VR Awards as a finalist in the top VR content creator for 2019 2020. First, I want to say a gigantic thank you. I never ever imagined that this community would be so amazing and strong and passionate for VR. However, there's more to come and news to cover, so let's just get right into the news. One of my personal most anticipated VR games, Solaris, has announced recently that their game is delayed. This is one game that I have been looking forward to trying out and playing ever since the original announcement last year, as it fits a lot of the things that I'm really looking for in a VR game. It's a sci-fi competitive multiplayer shooter that has objective-based maps. It was supposed to launch in just two days, but that's been delayed until next month, September 24th. Unfortunately, the game is only launching on the Oculus Store and Oculus Quest, so Facebook accounts are required. But the developers have said a Steam release is eventually planned. Really, I'd rather this one be delayed anyways than ship a rushed or unfinished build. Like Miyamoto says, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rush game is forever bad. Speaking of Facebook accounts, you've likely heard that Facebook, which owns Oculus, is now requiring all new Oculus VR headsets to have a Facebook account. Right now, if you already have an Oculus account, you can either merge them or you can wait until 2023. Then you will be forced to merge the two accounts or you'll practically lose functionality of your VR device. Now, I know this is causing quite a stir in the VR community, and I know that there are always two sides of the coin here. People that really don't care about the situation and people that care a whole lot about the situation. I already made an entire video on the subject last week, including a bunch of pros and cons regarding the situation and my own personal thoughts, so if you want to hear that, you can just check out that video after this one. But long story short, I'm not very happy and it's pretty unfair to everyone involved, us, the consumers, developers, and the other VR competition. And the fact that Oculus has been on record before stating that this would not happen, and here we are. But I'm not going on too long about this, especially since I've already made an entire video on it. I just wanted to mention it because it happened last week and it was kind of a big deal. But now on to our main topic today. This is one of my favorite topics regarding VR, the applications of brain-controlled virtual reality. I will warn you though, some of the things here aren't exactly breaking news or brand new things that happened this week, but instead are topics that I want to bring up because, well, they're massively underreported, they're exciting, and what's new to me just might be news to you. I mean, this company is claiming to be launching the first mass market ready brain computer interface this year. That's exciting. So I covered a company months ago called Luxidlink, as they were releasing more information on their EEG add-ons for various VR headsets, including the Rift S, Vive, and Vive Pro. The cool part regarding Luxid is that these are devices that you can buy now, and you can create your own applications using the Luxid Link. There are a few demos out there that look promising, like a VR game that allows you to shoot fireballs at a dragon depending on how concentrated the device deems you to be, but there's another company that looks to be doing something very special regarding building a brain-computer interface. That's where Neurable comes to play. Neurable has been creating EEG VR devices for years now, mostly for research and practical applications in the medical field, like helping people that are disabled control devices or objects that they wouldn't be able to before. But over the past few years, Neurable has been focused on the applications that would also excite just about any VR enthusiast. The application of a brain-computer interface in virtual reality for things like games or entertainment. Even a couple years back, Neurable had a game demo using their device and an HTC Vive that allowed you to control objects within the scene using no controllers, only your brain. And here's what that looked like. The best uh, VR experience I've, I've ever had. Are you allow you to perform actions using your mind. When an object flashes, that means you have control over it. 
We need to find a way. But is it really believable? How is this any different from a standard EEG? Because anyone specialized in EEG technology, which is practically what both LucidLink and Neurable use, will be the first to tell you that EEG is far from a precise way to read someone's mind or interpret actions for a game. And the difference lies in software and this AI algorithm that the creator speaks very highly about. Basically, the more brains that are read doing simple actions using this device, the more accurate that the interpretations will be. EEGs inherently aren't a very precise way of measuring or predicting a person's actions, but Neurable and their algorithms have done something pretty special with this demonstration. But it's not so much just this that excites me. It's how something like these devices could interact with our current or close future VR applications. Let me give you an example. How many times have you been in a VR game and you reach down to grab something, but the game has you grab something that you didn't want. This would never be a problem in real life. You think about grabbing an object and you perform the function to do so. But in our near future, something like a brain-controlled interface and an advanced learning algorithm intermingled with current technology like VR gloves and eye tracking will make VR applications work for and with you instead of the many times it does the opposite. And in case you're thinking all of this is so far away, I'll tell you right now, things like gloves and eye tracking are a lot closer to being in your home than you think. But that's an episode for a later time, also coming sooner than you think. And this isn't all just laboratory equipment and far off dreams. In early 2020, Neurable received $6 million in funding for this particular message. Quote, creating the first everyday brain-computer interface. Coming soon to a head near you. End quote. And while we don't know exactly what that device will look like yet, Neurable has given some hints and information just the past few months regarding it. And we'll get into that in just a second, but I wanted to bring up this topic as well. There's this mystical idea of controlling everything in VR with your brain, using a brain-computer interface, or, you know, an EEG even though that's not really possible. And for a technology like VR that is meant to simulate reality or make a better version of it, I think it's a decent thought experiment to imagine what devices like these can do to improve our existence within those virtual realities, allowing the game to better understand what we're trying to do within them, both massively improving immersion and making games more complex without making them more difficult or frustrating. Or imagine the possibilities of changing difficulties based on the frustration that is read from your brain, or even just to play the right music track to make the experience that much more enjoyable. Enjoyable. And while EEG technology certainly is not complex enough to control something like Half-Life Alex on its own, it is perfectly capable of making every single interaction and experience within it more enjoyable, memorable, and entertaining. So what will these devices possibly look like? Well, Neurable says they're not exactly ready to show them off yet, but they will be in the form factor of simple headphones. And the company is being pretty tight-lipped about literally any information regarding the design, except for that fact. And it is supposed to launch or at least be revealed sometime this year. The point of this project is to give tools to the public and see what we can do with it in our own applications, which is exactly what something like the VR community would absolutely jump on. And I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, I'll be able to get some time with it as well when it's ready, but either way, I'll keep you updated as I hear more on it. And that was a long segment, so I think it's time for a meme break! Full body tracking with Blade and Sorcery and a meme from yours truly. Ow! Ow! My I just kicked a hole in my wall. Did you just say you made a hole? Yeah, look at it. God, this is the second hole you've made in this household. Ow, my toe. <laughs> yeah, she said the second hole in the house. VR has been taking a toll. But now, back to the news. Microsoft Flight Simulator has released on Steam and the Microsoft Store, and I've been playing it recently and enjoying it quite a bit. And in case you weren't aware, the game is said to receive VR support just a little later in the year. Previously, Microsoft said that the game would only be available on the Reverb G2 at launch, but that has since been taken back, fortunately. And it looks like it will just be optimized for the G2 and available for all headsets, whatever that means. And to be honest, I'm extremely excited. Market reports say that Microsoft Flight Simulator will generate somewhere in the neighborhood of $2.6 billion of revenue for multiple industries due to hardware sales, and that includes VR headsets, which will more than likely be the absolute best way to play the game. I do have some concerns though. I have a 2080 Ti and a 3900X, and with the game at ultra slash high settings, I'm getting sub 40 FPS 
FPS at 1440p, and I don't know how the game will be runnable or optimized with the Reverb G2 that has a much higher resolution of 2160 by 2160 per eye. Hopefully, either the game will get massively optimized or some magic occurs for VR support because 20 to 30 FPS scenes in VR doesn't exactly sound like a good time. Or I guess I could just run the game on the lowest settings, but nobody likes that. And no question of the week this week, but please leave questions below in the comments for me to answer next week. I will be answering two of them. Also, follow up on my Twitch channel. I stream all sorts of VR and non-VR stuff over there. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters, which I will be having a Patreon-exclusive meetup very soon, so if you'd like to join up, link is in the description. I want to especially thank my Omegas like Benji, Chunkawanka, Fusion Oak, HCG Randon, Insomniac, Jeku, Crossalon, Zimph, Ronzarelli, Token Engineer, Tristan Sloan, True Killa, and Very Evil Shadow. I literally couldn't be doing any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.